Jamie and Claire are going on a cruise. I've never been on a cruise, but I'll tell you what, when I do go, I'd like to have one with pools and an unlimited buffet, not moldy water and rations. Jamie and Claire set sail for Jamaica to rescue young Ian. They have brought along their crew, Mr. Willoughby and Fergus. But it turns out that Fergus is not going to be going alone. He brings along Marsley, and they announce that they are married. Jamie is not excited. His stepdaughter and his adopted son are married? But it turns out the couple is only hand-fasted, which means they aren't really married unless they have a wedding night. And there's the loophole Jamie was hoping for. So he tells the two that they can't sleep together, and he puts Marsley in the room with Claire and puts Fergus in a room with himself. Yeah, Claire's not excited about that. She's waited 20 years to be with Jamie, and now she's not even going to be sleeping with him? Jamie doesn't like it, but he feels like he has to protect Marsley's virtue. Plus, Jamie knows that Leary is going to be really ticked off. I mean, after all, he did go off with her arch nemesis. She's already tried to kill him once. But it ends up being kind of okay that Jamie and Claire are not together because he is so seasick. She makes him tea, but it just isn't cutting it. Eventually, he turns to Mr. Willoughby, after Mr. Willoughby warns him that he could have to lose his testicles from puking so much. I didn't even know that's a thing. I hope that's made up for the story. He suggests that Jamie try acupuncture, which Jamie does, and it totally works. Of course, he keeps it a secret from Claire because he doesn't want to hurt her feelings. But when she finds out, she's not annoyed. She's just glad that something worked, and she wishes yet again that Jamie had just told her. Everything's going along swimmingly, which is the perfect time on Outlander for something to turn into a disaster. The group hits the doldrums, and so they're just sitting there. It's too bad Claire couldn't have brought a motor back in her bat suit. That would have been convenient. Everybody starts to get a little stir crazy, then the water goes bad, and everybody's looking for someone to lynch. Well, not lynch exactly. They want to Jonah them, just like the Bible, and throw somebody overboard that's bringing the bad luck. They start thinking through who did or did not touch the lucky horseshoe when they got on the boat. And one of Jamie's crew members can't remember if he touched it or not. But of course, Claire thinks this is all ridiculous. She's already talked to the captain about it before. He doesn't like that somebody's on there with red hair. And then he tells Claire that if she really wanted to be good luck, she'd go around the cabin with her shirt off. That captain is so confused. Girls only do that if they want beads at Mardi Gras. Ultimately, Jamie's crew member does go and climb up the mast, and he's ready to jump off. Jamie stops him from jumping ship, and then Mr. Willoughby gives an impassioned and beautiful speech about how he left China and how much he loves women. So much that he wasn't willing to become a eunuch. And then he explains that he gave all of his life up so that he could keep his manhood, and then nobody here in Scotland would sleep with him because he was Chinese. He then throws papers into the air, and all of a sudden, the wind starts. Everybody thinks he's done some kind of magic trick or brought good luck to the boat. But really, he'd seen a bird flying low, and he knew that that meant rain was coming. He's a smart guy, and it's obvious, Jamie has good taste in friends. And once again, everything's fine. Oh, until a ship starts firing at them signals. Turns out they've got typhoid fever on board, and they need a surgeon to come over and help. Claire feels compelled and explains to Jamie that she can't catch the assumed typhoid on board because she's been vaccinated. Jamie doesn't want to let her go, but off she goes, alone, to that ship. And then the ship picks up speed and leaves Jamie and his crew behind, basically kidnapping Claire. I'm starting to wonder if Jamie and Claire will ever be able to stay together. It feels like something that's just impossible. Hopefully they'll rendezvous in Jamaica.